Hello everyone, let's talk about the coagulation cascade involved in secondary hemostasis. Basically, there are three interrelated pathways of coagulation, each representing a unique series of biochemical reactions. These pathways are the intrinsic, extrinsic, and the common pathway. Each pathway is activated by a different mechanism. The activation of the intrinsic pathway occurs when a blood vessel is injured, exposing the subendothelial basement membrane and collagen. Both surfaces promote coagulation. The extrinsic coagulation pathway is activated by the release of tissue thromboplastin into the plasma from injured tissue cells. And the common pathway begins with activation by either the intrinsic or the extrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway is named as such because all the required reactants for this pathway are already in the circulation or the blood vessels, unlike the extrinsic pathway that requires exposure to extravascular tissue factor for triggering. That is why an injury to the blood vessel can activate this pathway. When the subendothelial surface is contacted by the coagulation factors 12, 11, high molecular weight kininogen and precolic crane, the contact activation of the intrinsic begins. The contact factors 12 and 11 are converted to 12A and 11A. Factor 11A with calcium in turn converts factor 9 to 9A. Factor 9A with platelet calcium and a cofactor, factor 8, converts factor 10 to factor 10A in the common pathway. The subscript A indicates the activated state of the factor. When a tissue cell is injured, tissue thromboplastin is exposed and activates factor 7 to factor 7A. Factor 7A with calcium and platelet phospholipid activates factor 10 to factor 10A in the common pathway. The common pathway begins with the activation of factor 10 to factor 10A, with a cofactor, factor 5A, and calcium converts factor 2, which is prothrombin, to factor 2A, known as thrombin. Factor 2A converts factor 1, known as fibrinogen, to fibrin. Factor 13 then stabilizes the fibrin clot. Both the intrinsic and the extrinsic coagulation pathways lead to secondary hemostasis, namely the formation of the stable fibrin clot. The clot thus includes both the fibrin from the secondary hemostasis and the platelet plug formed in primary hemostasis. Let's get over this again. The intrinsic pathway is activated by the exposure of collagen, platelets, and chemicals. The factors involved in the intrinsic pathway are 12, 11, 9, and 8 together with high molecular weight kininogen and precalicrane. The extrinsic pathway is activated by endothelial damage and the coagulation factor involved is number 7 with the help of tissue factor. The common pathway has the coagulation factors 10, 5, 2, 1, and 13. The coagulation factors, also called procoagulants, are transported in the plasma. There are 16 coagulation factors. Most are glycoproteins synthesized in the liver, although monocytes, epithelial cells, and megakaryocytes produce a few. Some factors are enzymes that circulate in inactive forms called zymogens, and the others are cofactors. These bind, stabilize, and enhance the activity of these enzymes. In 1958, the International Committee for the Standardization of the Nomenclature of the Blood Clotting Factors officially named the plasma procoagulants using Roman numerals in the order of their initial description or discovery, and not their sequence in the coagulation cascade. Here is a list of all the factors with their other given names. Zymogens include factors 2, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, and precalicrane. The procoagulant cofactors that participate in complex formation are tissue factor, located in membranes of fibroblasts and smooth muscle cells, and soluble factors 5, 8, and high molecular weight kininogen. The remaining components of the coagulation pathway are fibrinogen, 
which is a thrombin substrate. Factor 13 is considered as a transglutaminase. Calcium, which is a mineral. Von Willebrand factor, which serves as a factor 8 carrier. And platelet adhesion. And the platelet factor 3 with phospholipids that function as the assembly molecule. Precarlicrane is also called Fletcher factor, and high molecular weight kininogen, also called Fitzgerald factor, have never received Roman numerals because they belong to the calicrane and kinin systems, respectively, and their primary functions lie within these systems. Platelet phospholipids, particularly phosphatidylserine, are required for the coagulation process but were given no new Roman numeral. Instead, they were once called collectively as platelet factor 3. Notice that there is no Roman numeral 6. This was assigned to a procoagulant that later was determined to be activated factor 5. 6 was then withdrawn from the naming system and never assigned yet. To end this video, let me give you with a mnemonic of the coagulation cascade. Foolish people try climbing long slopes after Christmas. Some people have fallen. Hope that helps you out. Thank you very much for watching. Created using Powtoon.